Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City, his officially wrapped filming. We've got updates for Thor, Love and Thunder, and Halloween Kills, and there is some controversy surrounding the 93rd Academy Awards. We're talking all of this plus more. This is Let's Talk Movie News. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Movies. I'm Brad. Uh, Miguel, guys. Wow. 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 <laughs> I'm not ashamed. No, you shouldn't be. Um, today is April 30th, and this is episode number three of Let's Talk Movies. Uh, if you haven't checked out our main show, Let's Talk Movies, um, we encourage you to do so. We just wrapped up our decade series, and uh, we've been talking, we've been taking a look at the 70s, the 80s, the 90s in film, and we've been having a great time with that. So, uh, New episodes of that show drop Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're on video form on YouTube. We're on all the major podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, and so on and so on and so on. Y'all know the drill. Um, how you doing tonight, Bayo? I just saw Mortal Kombat, and I still don't get the hype. Mm. My dad liked it. I was actually just talking to him about that this get afternoon. Get the fuck out of here. You just told he, me the other day. He, didn't he like said it. it was far-fetched, but he was like, it was he said it was all right. He wasn't like he did I shouldn't say he liked it. He he thought it was decent. But. I don't know, man. It was it, it was tough to watch. I'm not gonna lie, I skipped through a lot of it. Because I was like, this is just uh pointless. Are we retracing the same things, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like or like it's just like we're uh we're basically just going over like pointless uh monologues and like conversations i was like I, i'm almost here just to see like some kick-ass fight scenes yeah and yeah. i'm not like i don't I know like, i i personally did not like it and it makes me wonder why it's already generated so many views on hbo max mm. which i guess i could see but it's i doubt it's gonna i doubt it's gonna cross uh the Godzilla versus Kong viewerships. Oh, probably not. No, that had way more hype building building into it, though. I mean, the fan base for Godzilla versus Kong is so much bigger mm-hmm. than Mortal Kombat, you know? Yeah. So, and so, I think it's I mean, a generational thing. I mean, like our parents' generation grew up playing the arcade version of Mortal Kombat in like the seventies and early eighties, you know? So. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure it's a little bit of a generational thing. Um, but speaking of Godzilla versus Kong, we have a little bit of the actually just this just dropped today, and I don't even know if you've had a chance to see this yet. So I'm kind of uh, I'm interested. We'll get there at some point. But um, okay. so this first news story we have is a little bit of a continuation from last week's opening. Um, and really, we we debated on whether or not we even wanted to include this. Um, but as I've said before, we're not interested in breaking any news, but we will talk about them. Mm -hmm. the name of the show is literally let's talk movies something um so uh, again i'm going to preface this conversation with this you know as i said in our previous show i will not allow this to be a tony moran bashing session yes we're talking about tony moran's apology that he has since issued if there's gonna be any bashing it's gonna come from brad because obviously i'm not too well in depth with halloween and if you guys have seen our previous uh, let's talk movie news podcast you can tell brad had some animosity towards this man well it, it's not even i disagree with him and I, I i wholeheartedly disagree with what he said but i'm not gonna allow this to become a bashing session any crude hateful comments are gonna get deleted i'm just gonna go ahead and be straight up with y'all anybody mm-hmm. listening i'm gonna i'm there there's art as i said before and i'm gonna say it again there's already enough hatred in the world and i'm not gonna let this show be another another i'm I'm not gonna add fuel to that fire well if that if that makes sense so um let me also say we are two guys who are sharing their thoughts and their ideas with a community you should read tony moran's apology for yourself and come to your own conclusions if you're coming to guys like us or to dave mccray or to mike and jay we watched a movie for your opinion i wouldn't do that I, i wouldn't go to anybody else for your opinion you read it for yourself you come up with your own thoughts um we're just going to talk about our thoughts and uh we're going to try i want to approach this as objectively and as rationally as i possibly can 
fair. Would you? So would see. you? That I I think that's fair. That's fair. Um, so let's hear your rant. So it, he, here's the deal. Um, I really kind of wanted to ask you. Did you read the apology? I have not. I sent it to you. <laughs> I've had. Here, I was you, I was just like uh, initially I was just like man fuck Tony Moran. No, okay, I don't need so apology. let let's read it. Okay, let's read it while while I'm here. Let me get it pulled up here. Let me get it pulled up. Let let's let's read it for those of you who have not heard Tony Man Tony Moran's apology, his formal apology. He posted this. We're filming this on Tuesday, the twenty seventh of April. Um, this was posted two or three days ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. And his apology read, this was on his Facebook page, I believe. First, foremost, and most importantly, for this post is that I wanted to sincerely and deeply apologize for certain language I used that is contained in a video montage that was made of me. I will not explain the content nor give reasons or excuses. The certain language I used simply on its own, even without context, is deplorable and disgusting. I am deeply ashamed of it, and I will, and I always will be. I am also very sorry for offending people with it, and have it, so, and hope at some point I will be forgiven. But I truly would understand if some people never do. Again, this is the number one reason for this post. I have a much lesser issue that I'm going to address, so I appreciate your patience. And it's for the fans of Halloween that don't know me and have never met me. The people that have met me, know me, friends with me, don't have a need for me to explain the video clips and this montage. They know it's ridiculous and childish. The ending is pretty choppy, but impressive in the sense of how much time and energy this must have taken, because I know what I say in interviews and convention Q&As with fans present, but I want to clear some things up for you guys that don't know me. My main problem with this National Enquirer, quote unquote, or any other gossip rag type of post is not really about defending myself because it's so easy to find interviews of me, and you would see that I say almost the exact same thing in all of them, the truth. Know this about fans of Halloween. Know this about fans of Halloween that may have had a bad taste in their mouth or feel tainted by this montage. My loyalty is to the fans, whether I know them or not, and I will always defend them. Without you fans, the fans, the movie, without you fans, the movie doesn't become what it became. Excuse me. Simple as that, I'll explain a couple of things. First, back in 1978, when I was 21 years old, did I think Halloween was going to be stupid and a piece of crap? Absolutely. I was absolutely ashamed of doing it. And at the time, and only my best friend and girlfriend knew about it at the time, I figured a week or two in the drive-in and it would be gone. You see, back in 1978, it wasn't like it is today. Back then, for an actor, it was only slightly above soft porn and then hardcore porn. Back in 1978, pretty much the only way to see nudity was in horror films and porn. Now, because of this director's and producer's now, because of this, directors and producers wouldn't want to hire you because they felt you sold out and didn't respect your craft. It could turn out to be a death sentence. Here's the other thing. I'm pretty sure Halloween was the first horror movie that involved a mask. It was a first. I didn't know about having to wear one until I signed the contract and showed up on set. I was mortified, but I was also broke as a joke, so I did it. I was also invited to go for a screening for the cast and crew, and guess what? Yep, I threw the invitation in the mail and didn't go. Like an asshole. I tell this part of the story and a lot more, and the rest of the story basically revolves around me being self-depreciating and making fun of myself. You'll have to watch or hear my full interviews to truly understand this and the truth. I'm truly humbled by my fans, always have and always will be. You see, I didn't get lucky or fortunate, etc. I got completely blessed. There is no other word that truly fits how I feel. This is why it's so humbling for me. Bar none, I have met the best, most genuine and unselfish people through horror cons. So getting back to my point about defending fans, the person that I truly believe did this montage obviously doesn't have all of you fans in the best interest. If this person did, why go to these extreme efforts to lie to you? It would only be found out sooner or later. I also understand this person's cowardliness not to identify themselves. This person would be exposed as a blatant liar, lose credibility, etc. Wow, this is long. I didn't realize. Yeah, This person has an all-encompassing and consuming obsession with me and has for years and couldn't help but put themselves in one of the video clips. I used to get angry, but for a few years now, I simply find it sad and pathetic. Because of the ending, if people want to choose to believe it, 
that's okay with me. People are going to do what they want to do or believe even if there are facts to disprove it. There's people that judge all the time without facts. I can't change that, and I'm not going to try to shove it down people's throats to try to convince them like this video montage is trying to do. And as they say, haters are going to hate no matter what. It's their choice. That's how they want to live. Like I said earlier, this is not for me. This is for the people and fans that don't know me, that are hurt, angry, etc. Because you're a fan of Halloween. I will always protect that. John Carpenter is a genius, and he changed the whole landscape and I'm blessed to have been a part of it. This person I believe that did this is also using an 18-year-old to help them mainly through Instagram, actually taking advantage of an 18-year-old. This kid is, po um, excuse me, it, it kind of breaks a little bit. Um, this kid is posting on as my fan page, which is not a fan page at all. I met this kid <coughs> and even signed an autograph for him at a convention recently. It's despicable and really weird because of the obsession. Anyways, thank you guys for taking the time to read all of this, and I hope this has helped to clear, and I hope this has helped some of you out there that had problems with it. Take care. Wow, I did not realize how long that was until I actually, like, sat down to read it out loud. Yeah. So, your initial thoughts? It's not that heartfelt, but I had to, I had to end up on it for a few days. I mean, it sounds heartfelt, but in the beginning, but then, like, Obviously, whenever he starts, you know, pointing the fingers at someone else, it's like, come on, man. So for me, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and bash Tony. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I know there's everybody, I'm, I'm sure all the Halloween fans watching this want me to call him what he called you all, or I guess called us as yeah. fans of the film, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just not because Again, there are people out there. I've seen the YouTube videos. I've seen the Twitter accounts. I've seen the posts. I'm not going to add to that. I'm, I'm just not. Um, and I certainly want to give credit where credit is due. Tony didn't have to say anything, but he chose to. Now, whether or not you really think that his apology was adequate enough, that's up to you. Um, I, I don't want to be one of the people who are like, an apology, apology, apology. And then when they finally give an apology, be like, that wasn't good enough. You know what I mean? I don't want to be that because that there's a certain level where that's uncool too. Would you agree mm -hmm. with that? Yes. Um, and overall, uh, just like we said last time, my problem is not how he talks about Halloween or about his experience working on Halloween. My oh, problem is about how he addresses other people and not even just the fans, how he addressed Tyler Maine how he addressed Jamie Lee Curtis, how he addressed John Carpenter, how he addressed the people waiting in line to get his signature. And again, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I will admit this video was made to make him look like a douchebag. It was. That's the, that was the video's point, this montage. Um, but, you know, his experience, you know, he, he said that he felt that the movie was one step above doing softcore porn. He felt uncomfortable. He felt embarrassed. I take no issues with that at all. It was a different time. We just got done doing our decade series and we, we talked about this. It was a different time. Mm -hmm. He's got, there's some truth to that. If, you know, nudity was kind of a new thing. Nudity was not a, a common thing in film at that point. And the seventies, that was the first decade that really started getting ballsy enough to do it. Yeah. Um, and there is validity in his experience. If he had a bad experience or if he was nervous, that's fine. Like, I have no problem with him talking about that. Um, his biggest apology was for the fans. And again, I'm saying this all objectively. Uh, his biggest apology was for the fans. You know what I mean? He, uh, we've all heard the phrase, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Mm -hmm. And I think he's aware of that. I think he knows that um, the fans are kind of that's yes. why he keeps getting invited to all these cons and stuff because mm -hmm. people want to meet him and that's yeah. cool like that he should be excited um and, and again i say this objectively there was no apology specifically to tyler main for calling him a cocksucker or for calling him another word that i will not even say on the air okay there was no apology to jamie lee curtis for accusing her of sleeping with everyone on the set without any evidence to prove that um did you even know that that happened in the video 
I mean, it's the seventies. Let's be honest. So okay, I, I, I don't know. It could, maybe, not, it did, okay, maybe it did. Maybe it did happen. No, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not, not, I'm not. I'm not supporting his claim. I'm just saying, like in the seventies, shit like that happens. I, I but, mean, I maybe it did. I, I know that what I've always been told and what I've always heard is that Jamie Lee Curtis was nervous. It was her first mm-hmm. movie role. And, you know, she was nervous enough that John Carpenter called her on the second day of shooting and she thought he was calling to fire her. So, like, I feel like somebody who's that nervous and that, I have to do good, I have to do good, I have to do good. I feel like somebody like that wouldn't be like, well, hey. Like, you know what I mean? That, that yeah. just, I feel like that wouldn't happen. And again, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not saying he's right. I'm not saying he's wrong. Um, there was no apology to John Carpenter. He also said that John Carpenter was possibly abusive towards Deborah Hill, um, who co-wrote and co-produced the movie with him. Again, yes, there are pictures of Deborah Hill wearing sunglasses, but there's a lot of pictures of Deborah Hill wearing sunglasses. I think she liked to wear sunglasses. I don't know. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I'm just saying that objectively. He didn't really mention any of that. He specifically addressed the fans. And I feel a little bit torn because I, while I think he was trying to be genuine, he didn't address some of those big issues. And mm-hmm. a lot of the homophobic comments came from what he was saying about Tyler Maine, who played Michael Myers in Rob Zombie's remakes on, in H1 and H2. Um, and then I, I'll tell you what. At first, I thought, why are you changing the subject halfway through and changing the focus, as we said, to the people who wrote the, uh, the article and who made the montage? Yeah. Uh, and I will say, we actually just got followed literally probably 20 minutes before we started filming this video by a Twitter account called Tony Moran Unmasked. And the, uh, the caption says, I'm just your average 18 year old who buys an autograph from somebody then is somehow used to make slanderous pages about them. Oh shit, do we really? And it is, it's a bashing account for Tony Moran. Now, here's what I'll say about that. Whoever made this account, get the hell off of Twitter. Delete that account. Because as we've said with the same people, Miguel, you know this, just like we said, the people who went and uh, the people who were like, restore the Snyderverse, restore the Snyderverse, release the air cut. Damn all of you Warner executives to hell. That no, dude, like that, you are being counterproductive. If you stoop, I, I'm not even going to say stoop to the level. If you contribute to the hatred, you are part of the problem. Would you agree with that? I agree. So I don't know. I, I saw that we got followed by that account and I, I didn't follow it back. I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I, Thanks for the follow, by the way. But yeah, get your shit together pretty much. I, I don't even want to follow like that, man. I, I just, you know, I, at first, I, when going, rewinding a little bit, at first when, I, when he was changing the subject in the article, I was like, dude, come on, keep it about your apology. Like, don't change the subject. Don't start pointing fingers. Mm. But I saw that account and I was like, are you kidding? Like, I know as Halloween fans and as movie fans, we are passionate, but good Lord, y'all need to let some stuff go sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. I, I just, mean, it, but I, it's just, I don't know, sometimes, <sighs> how can I put this right? Some, sometimes some people in life are chosen to be like, they're, they're, they're like forced to be like, okay, you're a symbol now. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's just like, they're going to be in the spotlight of certain situations in their respective careers and, and, I mean, and Moran that, is one of them and i guess i could say it's his time in the fish barrel you know what i mean it's like it's your time to like for the shot to, for the light to be shining down on you yeah I, I i do understand what you're saying i just with all of this being said i am a believer in second chances and as a fan as a halloween fan not as a person as not as a host of let's talk movies not a, as a human being I'm willing to accept his apology for what it is. I didn't necessarily feel hurt when I watched the video. I, I mean, I was like, wow, that's not cool. But I didn't feel hurt by what he said personally. His yeah, opinion if you, of Halloween if you, if doesn't affect my by that, opinion of Halloween. Yeah. If you're offended by Tony Moran's fucking, that montage of someone, that, of, so, of someone else's creation of Tony Moran bashing the fans, then... 
you really need some time to take a look and to take a look because yeah you gotta understand like these people are just gonna show their opinions and if you're gonna be belittled by the opinions of others every time it's you're you're gonna live with like a pretty like troubled life like people like someone's gonna make fun of you for liking something and it's your it's your duty or like it's your choice to either take it and be offended by it or just to take it and be like well that's just what i like and you can get over it it's pretty much even though if it's the actor of the thing if he's like belittling the show it's like okay cool but you still made a dope show and we love it yeah i'm sorry you don't like the creation that we all came to love i mean even if john carpenter came out tomorrow and said you know what halloween was the worst thing i ever did Mm -hmm. it was the biggest mistake i'd be like okay yeah exactly i still love it i mean like Mm -hmm. i ain't taking all the posters down because one of the cast members said they didn't like it like i'm not gonna do that Mm -hmm. i love it it's a movie that i continuously come back to and that i enjoy and it's a franchise that i enjoy and someone else's opinion is not going to change that i you know overall and i'm going to wrap up here I, i think we've given it enough attention i think we've given enough conversation um Overall, I think its apology was honest. I, I mm-hmm. and you know, really, the only way to tell if it was honest is in a year, in two years. You know, once cons, once COVID runs its course, and cons start opening back up, and you know, once things of that nature start getting back up and running, if Tony starts doing the same exact thing, and if he starts being disrespectful to people in the same way he was, and I know there's guy talk. I know. I mean, look at. I, look at any tv show look at any play look at any video game look at any youtube show or podcast there's guy talk there's friend talk where you goof around and you're silly Mm. goof around be silly have some fun but don't blatantly bully other people or disrespect other people again Mm. i accept his apology i think it was i i I think it was okay for me i think it's fine again i'm not going to be the person that is like he needs to apologize and then as soon as they do what you want them to do, you just jump right back on their case for it not being good enough. I don't want to be that person. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I sincerely, Tony, man, if you're, if you're, li- I doubt you're listening, but if you are listening, we sincerely wish you the best dude. And um, I, I, I hope that this has, this will change things for the better. And um, yeah, also, be kind to each other him. folks. Yeah, be kind to Just each other. Be guys. kind to each other. Please, please, please be kind. Have some fun. Joke around. Be silly, but be kind. One world, one people. Oh my God. You did not just make a Falcon Winter Soldier reference. That's sure awesome. Did. That was really well put. I'm not going to lie. Go. That was dope. Yeah. All right. Moving on here. Moving on. Let's see what else we got. Um, so we have a couple of cool other things on our agenda to talk about tonight. First one, I actually want to. Uh, I want to screen share a little bit here. I want to pull this article up. Let us see. Let's see if this works, guys. Oh, Let us see. We are, we are rolling. All right. So this came from comicbook.com. I saw this a few days ago. Um, and this article, this was on April 26th. So yesterday, as of us recording this episode, um, a viral tweet sparks panic over the future of physical media. So this is specifically related to warner media so warner brothers home entertainment um their parent company so here's what the article had to say a new report emerged on social media yesterday claiming that warner brothers home entertainment indeed intended to phase out physical media beginning in earnest 2022 the comments from animation historian jerry beck signed singled out warner brothers print on demand service warner archive but went one step further and suggested that changes are coming to warner's home entertainment options line wide beck's comments specifically addressed looney tunes and other animation projects interesting which she sometimes advises the studio on but suggested a larger change at the corporate level which seems to be how most of the people reading comments on twitter are taking it so let's back up here okay so Obviously, this guy is he 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 worked in animation, um, but also he's kind of on the inside to know a little bit more about what's going on with the uh, with the corporation. So, like we just said, at the corporate level, um, 
you know, there has been nothing officially announced by um, by Warner Brothers uh, about physical media going away or being phased out. Um, but I think that's kind of interesting. As a movie collector, that's interesting. Yeah. So if we go on here, um, again, he's not a representative of Warner Media. But again, like this article says, fans are taking his word pretty seriously since he claims to have inside information on the Warner Archive site where collections like a recent anthology of Tex Avery cartoons that he referenced in his initial comments. Um, Gary Miernow, Miernow, I'm sorry if I'm getting your, rain, your name wrong, Gary, uh, a publicist who works with Warner Home Entertainment, uh, pointed out on social media that Warner Brothers and Universal inked a deal last year that will keep Blu-ray and DVD releases coming. At the time, the joint venture was expected to be up by Q1 of this year, meaning that there will be physical releases of big movies from Warner and Universal until at least 2031. So what's your take on this, Miguel? So like pretty much by like 2022, Warner Media is going to start pulling or like pulling back the productions of of like physical DVD copies, right? It, 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 this, this suggests, this tweet and this supposed leak mm -hmm. suggests that um, Warner Media will be slowly beginning the process in 2022 of phasing out physical media. So all your DVDs, gone. All your Blu-rays, gone. And they will be transitioning into a streaming or digital type thing whether that's a code, whether that's HBO Max, because Warner Media does own HBO Max. Um, that's how we've gotten Mortal Kombat and Godzilla versus Kong and all of the, you know, these films that are now releasing on HBO Max. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, I, I think that's interesting. Um, and I, I know we're moving in that direction because, you know, even if you look at, you know, we had DVD, then we had Blu-ray, and then we had, what is it Blu-ray? What, what's the advanced, not 4K. 5k no i'm kidding i don't no, know there, there's a there's a it's blu-ray blu-ray max blue or color. something like that i don't know yeah blue, something there's there's an advanced blu-ray and then there's 4k but how much far, how much farther can you go past 4k yeah you know what i mean yeah like 4k is a is pretty crisp and pretty hd as it is so mm -hmm. i don't really even know where you like how much farther are you gonna how are we gonna go to 25k i mean like uh, is it going to magnify the image? Is it going to be 3D? Like, I, I mean, like, what's the, how, how far do you go? Um, yeah. And I, I know. Think, yeah. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. I know that we are going to, oh, you know, uh, I mean, over the course of the next 20 years, even over the course of the next decade, I guarantee you they're not going to be the only one doing that. I mean, there's going to be a whole bunch of companies that start to phase out physical media. Because that's the day and age we're living in. I mean, look at streaming services and this whole big movie theater scare we've had. I mean, you know, we didn't know if movie theaters were going to be around at the end yeah. of this pandemic. And I think, I believe, fortunately, they are. I think they will be. Um, the movie theaters or just DVDs in general? Movie theaters. Okay. So, you know, I, for me, the first thing that goes to my mind is like, as a as a movie collector as someone who actually i like having a physic even video games i know like ps5 is doing the new thing where uh like where you don't need to um like there, there there's a disc version and then there's also a digital version where you just download the game i even like having a physical a physical copy of, of video games so what's your take on this overall final thoughts i think it's just uh I think it's just around the time where things are going to start changing for streaming for movies pretty much because I pretty, I'm almost certain that DVDs were going to come to an end because as they you can see, CDs pretty much dropped off the face of the oh, earth. Yeah. The, only reason, the only reason obviously why record players are making a comeback because they're a nostalgic feel. And yeah. obviously CDs may come back like that. I mean, who knows? Mm. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, CDs are going to be a thing of the past i think I, as if we all know it probably already is and yeah. uh, i think with dvds it may come to that same conclusion because again streaming services are just becoming the whole new rave now in this decade i think this decade right here and 
I want to say 2010 and 2020, it's crazy to say 2010, but in 2010 and 2020, like it's like the new age for like media, like everything is going to be streamed. Obviously, as you can see, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's some DVDs out there that still have like a form or a, a digital download with the actual DVD itself. So like the movie studios are already preparing for that because there'll be a time whenever these streaming services just become the normal thing to do. Like it's going to be weird to not have any streaming services. Same thing right. I think with cable. Cable. Oh yeah, soon, for sure. Cable is soon going to be a thing of the past as well. We Maybe. only have basic cable. Yeah, it's going to be CDs, uh, DVDs, and then cable. Those are the only ones that are going to be gone. Movies, sure. on the other hand, I think it'll still stick around for a little bit longer just because it has that uh, group association feeling. Yeah. Well, so, it, you mean movie theaters? Yeah, movie theaters. I think movie theaters are going to stick around because of the experience. Yeah, the I group think going it's, experience. I, I think, you know, even going with your friends and getting your snacks and finding your seat, you know, finding your seat and seeing it on a screen that is that big. I mean, I, I, I don't think that's going to go away as soon if it Mm -hmm. does at all, just because it's too, people like it too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's too, it's too ingrained in pop culture. Um, you know, CDs, I think CDs are pretty much already gone. I mean, if you go to a Walmart, even, you know, there, there is an entire aisle of vinyl and there's like a tiny little end cap of CDs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, there, I mean, cars now, if you go buy a brand new car right now, a lot of them don't even have a CD player in it. Like it's not even an option. There's satellite radio. That's it. Like yep. that's your only, that's your only and option. That's, and that's like streaming for the movies. Like, like everyone either has a Spotify or they have XM, XFM radio or they have, what the fuck is that? Whew. This is pineapple but that and was, passion fruit IPA. But that was strong. That was it. Well, I went from uh, it was it was tart uh, and bitter. It, it was. I went from this uh, this mango habanero whiskey, um, this heat wave thing, to that, and it was just like, woo! <laughs> it was just wild. But yeah. So yeah, that, that I I think that's interesting, and um, it'd I be like interesting to movies. catch up. It'd be interesting to keep up with this because it, it will. I'm sure a lot of your collections of DVDs may soon become like collector's items mm-hmm. because I mean, whenever it does go away, like, I mean, these CDs are laying around, these DVDs are laying yeah. around, they're, be- they're going to become rare for sure. And I mean, even look at like, like that. I have the, uh, the Halloween two VHS behind me. That's the one VHS I own. And I nabbed that. That was a deal. I got, I think I paid 24 bucks for that. And now there's probably a lot of those, but I mean, like, I mean, VHS tapes. I mean, like, I, I, I think there was, I saw, where was this? I think it was on somebody's YouTube video or something like that. There was a, it was, it was an original VHS of the Terminator of the first Terminator film, but it was still in the wrap with the blockbuster sticker on it it had the sticker yeah like you know when you remember i mean you remember this when blockbuster closed they had all the going out of business sale and Mm -hmm. you could you know you you went and you bought all your vhs and your dvds and whatever else um i remember those stickers so it's funny seeing that and i mean it was worth a lot of money you know yeah. So, I mean, I honestly, I've actually looked into it. I'd like to collect a couple more VHS tapes, j- even just to display them. Mm-hmm. You know well, what I mean? VHS is, VHS is a, right now, uh, it's just that nostalgic thing. It's Right. The way I think of it is like nostalgic tax. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same yeah. thing I could say for records. Yeah, I was just going to say that. The yeah. same thing, you have your records posted up there. I mean, it's all the all, same thing. Yeah, literally, these... These uh one, two, three, four, five, six, these six records right here is like I don't know, like 80, 90, 100 bucks, maybe. Because yeah. each of them are like 25 to 30 bucks because mm-hmm. it's it's that nostalgic tax that's going on with them. Just right. having a record player and that nostalgic feel, it costs a lot more to have it now because I mean back For then, sure. fuck. I'm sure back then it was like a dollar. If you go to any if you go to like a peddler's mall, 
and he like there's like a little box those those little small little non unknown records are like three cents because i mean some of them don't yeah. hold, hold value yeah and uh i have a couple of vhs's i have the i don't know if i bought it from them oh no i know where I, there is a movie there's a movie rental place a local movie rental place that had vhs's i think back in like 2002 if i'm not mistaken mm. and they were they were going out of business they were selling and someone i don't know who the fuck that is some guy that likes godzilla in richmond kentucky someone that isn't me and they bought all the godzilla movies and then all for some reason they didn't buy godzilla versus space godzilla 1994 i was like snagging that you know what we need to do i lied also i have i have h2 i have halloween 2 the original halloween 2 from 1981 on vhs i also have probably my prized vhs thing and i've had this since i was a kid you like say red rats I, this, your ass. no i have christmas vacation which is my favorite movie of all time if you've seen episode number 10 i have it on vhs and it's my family's copy i've had that for i mean we've had that since probably before i was born your family let you snag that i took it <laughs> that's fucking hilarious that's bad it's fine they're yeah. not watching but yeah. um that's my favorite movie of all time so i'm really glad i have that you know what we need to do i'm gonna come to richmond one of these days and we're mm. gonna go to peddler's mall and we are gonna raid vhs's and old you mean DVDs. to tell me you mean to tell me up there in northern kentucky they don't have peddler's mall no they do they have them i think florence might have one and there's one in scott county there's a couple of them they're they're scattered i think there's one in e-town too they're scattered mm. around but that would be fun that'd be a fun thing That'd be a fun Instagram I like live. To try that us, out. Yeah. Us, uh, <laughs> Instagram live. Hunt, hunting for VHSs. But yeah. If for those of you who don't live in Kentucky, or I don't know we if have, Peddler's Mall is just okay. a Kentucky thing. I don't no, know. It's it's mainly it's mainly like a southern, I guess like a southern, midwestern, southern thing. Probably but like it's a chain. It is a it's chain. Like a, it's basically like a secondhand store, pretty much, of just anything. It's like a thrift shop. Yeah. It's but it's like shop. a it's a thrift shop, but basically like flea market it's like when, a franchise flea market yes when you go to when you go to sell whatever i mean whatever shit you have there's there's everything from old pop culture stuff to old signs to furniture like old vintage furniture and it's kind of funny because like there's some there's some vendors that literally it's garbage like i like why would anybody ever pay money for this and then there's also stuff that is just like hidden gems that like people didn't really know what they had and they're just selling yeah. it for like 95 percent off or something yep. crazy so it's like yep. i don't know that'd be really fun dude we should definitely go and do that one of these days oh yeah and uh and i go there like almost every like other month just to see what's new i haven't been to one in a while there was one in louisville i remember i went to Louisville. i went up to louisville the other week to pick up a car there is and one there maybe yeah, that's what i'm thinking of because yeah, i know I i've been to one somewhere else it's like right next to walmart and i i we parked at the peddler's mall and i was like i really didn't know there was more than just one maybe for sales room. is there so, one for sales i don't know i feel maybe. like there's a couple of them scattered around yeah but anyways let, let's move on so uh another little piece of movie news that we have this week is um capcom hosted the uh the second resident evil showcase so um, so the second time Capcom has done a, uh, let me move this over here. The, the, the second time Capcom has done a Resident Evil showcase where they kind of talk about all the projects they have coming up, um, as Resident Evil is probably, if not Capcom biggest, one of, if not the biggest franchise that Capcom owns their biggest IP. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the showcase, there was a producer I, i'm i'm gonna say his name wrong i'm i just i know it hiroyuki kobayashi okay i'm very sorry if i'm saying this wrong um he made they mainly talked about resident evil infinite darkness he is a uh he's a an, an animation producer for capcom and for the resident evil series he's worked on i think he worked on four five and six he's worked on all of the resident evil um the cgi films and, uh, you know, as we know, Resident Evil Infinite Dark Darkness drops on Netflix this year. But he did have a little bit of an update on the status of the live action reboot of Resident Evil. And he had this today to say, he said, I have one more announcement for you related to the live action reboot of Resident Evil. Filming in Toronto has wrapped up and we are in the middle of creating the creatures in CGI. 
Now, I've before I before I give you my thoughts on this, I want to know if you and I are on the same page, if we can read each other's minds. What is your initial reaction to that statement? You don't like the idea of CGI monsters. You don't want to see CGI monsters. You this is why we monsters. this is see damn, this is why we do this show together because you can read yeah. my mind. I, I am I am so cautiously optimistic for Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Mm. I want this movie to blow my socks off. I really do. But when they said creating the creatures in CGI, I was like, I mean, also, well, I mean, we differ because we differ because obviously I play, I like, I prefer, I like those, I like those games and all those CGI monsters, but I get why you just want it to be uh, zombies right now because it's the initial Raccoon City. Like you just want to see zombies, and well, I, no, I, I mean, I want to see the monsters too. And I look, I get it. There has to be a certain level of CGI, like there has to be, because mm-hmm. you can't do a liquor, or you can't do Nemesis, or you can't do, you know, the Hunters, or any of the other classic. You know, look at Birkin when he turns into Tyrant. Mm-hmm. You can't do any of those characters without CGI, and I get that. But what I don't want to see is really crappy cgi on monsters that i love (laughs) or i don't want to see cgi zombies and again the perfect example i loved the storyline of world war z but the zombies were too damn cgi they just it looked there was something about it that looked fake it 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 looked like cgi um so I guess I, I really I shouldn't judge yet. I, I shouldn't. I the, I don't think it's a reason for alarm. I just I some some bells and whistles went off in my head when I uh, when I initially saw this because I was like oh, creating the creatures in CGI. Oh. I don't at least do it. At least do motion capture. You don't yeah. think it will? I don't think it'd be zombies. It'll probably just be like you know some freakish little you know frog frog monsters. You know, you know, you know what, what I'm talking about? Yeah, and, and if the, if they do if they do the lickers and the hunters like i said and some of the other side monsters and mm-hmm. creatures um as cgi and the cgi is done well i have no problem with that at all yeah but you if know, i see a zombie walk you know moaning around and walking and it is done on a computer i'm going to be pissed i'm going to be so heartbroken because I am a huge, first of all, y'all know this, we've talked about this before, I'm a huge zombie fan, and I, I just, I want, I think zombies work best, and I think zombies are the scariest with practical effects. Look at The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. You know, you might have your opinion on the, your opinions, I don't mean you specifically, Miguel, I just mean like anybody might have their opinions on the storyline of The Walking Dead, but you gotta admit the zombies look fire. They do. They really do. And like, that's all, that's all, that's a, most recent zombie flick or a series that actually took its time with its zombies. Like, I mean, these, yeah. these these people had to go to fucking zombie school. That's yeah. That's, that's a whole level of, yep. uh, uh, what's it called? Dedication. To it is. It is series for sure. So I, um, there, there's not really even anything else to say about that. And I know we've seen, we have seen like some of the set pictures, I know mm-hmm. there's the one set picture specifically. There's like 30 or so, you, you know, you just see black figures, basically black sil- silhouettes um, standing underneath of the, the RPD, the Raccoon City Police Department sign. And it's foggy and there's fire and there's smoke. And I, I, that gives me hope that the zombies will be practical mm-hmm. and practically done because it's actual people playing them. My fear is that they're going to try to do, you know, when you try to do, I know you haven't seen the the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, but they did. So for the remake of a Nightmare on Elm Street, instead of doing actual makeup on Freddy, they did like half makeup, but some of his face is CGI to look burned. Miguel, he looks like a burnt squirrel. Like it looks terrible. So I, I just, I hope that at least for the zombies they go practical that's my hope well i mean i doubt it i'm not gonna lie because you know you doubt that they'll go practical yeah because you know technology and all that bullshit 
I know. I Unless, just, I hope like, so. we would like we would have to look at the history of the director. If you can look at the director and look at its uh cinematography and just see what projects he's done, you could tell what what direction. He's I'm, gonna go yeah, to. I may have to do that this summer because I, I don't believe Johannes Brahms has. Um, oh or, wait, no, you not Johannes Brahms. Is this, Johannes is this Roberts. the director? Is this the director that literally has nothing under his belt? He doesn't have. I mean, he now he has stuff. I mean, I don't say that derogatory or in a derogatory way he just there's not a ton there so and it's not fit at least it's not films that i am familiar with Mm -hmm. so i don't know we'll have to see we'll have to check it out we will we'll have to check that one out and see uh see what happens but anyways i i definitely wanted to talk about the oscars um we just had the oscars last night again you're watching this late um after the episode is dropped, but we just had the Oscars last night, the 93rd Academy Awards. Um, a lot of films that I hadn't seen, some films that I had seen. Uh, I I have not seen Nomadland. Um, have you, you haven't seen that film either, have you? No, but let me tell you something right now. There is, I saw a meme and it talked about uh, a Pinocchio movie won an Oscar. I did. And I at that, that point, it's like they're making shit up. It's like because we never heard of that movie. You mm-hmm. know what pisses me off so much is the fact that these movies, it's almost as like these movies that are in the Oscars that we never heard of. I wonder with this like in order for something to win an Oscar, like it has to get like not only critic buzz, but also audience buzz. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like if it's not if I don't if we don't hear it on the mainstream until the oscars like what what weight does it have well and i i've always felt like that about the oscars though there's so many films that i'm like wow that was really good like i hope i see that get an oscar run not even for best picture for something yeah Yeah. and it doesn't get anything and then the oscars is so many films that i've never even seen before you know and i get it we're the films that we see in the movie theater are from a different pool because these are pulling from independent films these are pulling from overseas films I mean, these are, there's a whole, there's a much bigger pool that the, that the Academy is pulling from when they consider these for awards. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, specifically, there's been a lot of controversy with this particular show. Um, It was not in the, the, uh, the ballroom where it usually is due to COVID. Um, There were mainly just the, um, the nominees and their families there. Uh, And the, the, the biggest point of contention and frustration for people i think is that usually best picture is announced last after best actress and best actor Mm -hmm. this year they switched the order around and they did best picture and then announced best actress and then announced best actor um and while anthony hopkins who won best actor for the father i wanted to mention that because it's that's such a disgusting move to do because if like, if you like try to keep up with the Oscars that day, they literally did that. And they spent the entire show in memoriam of Chadwick Boseman, which again, rest in peace, my man. And they did this whole thing for Chadwick Boseman. And then Anthony Hopkins wins. It's like, that was, it's such a, I'm not saying it's disgusting. I'm saying that's such a sneaky way of keeping the viewers and track of it and yeah okay i know that the oscars viewerships have been going down but that's not the right way to do it to get no more and it's not you know honestly i didn't even me personally i didn't even take it this way um i know you know i, I think while anthony hopkins is very well deserving of an oscar i mean he's he's one i think this is his second oscar he's a fantastic actor i mm. follow him on instagram i think he's cool he reads poetry he plays piano dope he's a cool guy um i think a lot of people felt that chadwick boseman um who his last film was ma rainey's black bottom which was nominated Mm -hmm. was snubbed they felt that he was robbed of best actor um and you know i i actually i saw a couple of tweets one of those tweets read are you seriously telling me that the hashtag Oscars rearranged traditional award presenting order just on the prospect chadwick was was posthumously win best actor and have a big celebration for him only for hopkins to win and not even be there for a speech so it just ends 
Yeah. And I, I, again, I didn't take, I, I watched it live. I didn't take it that way. I wasn't like, no, but going back and looking at it, like after the fact, I was like, oh, like I see, like I kind I see, like I get it. I see why people may have felt that way about it. Yeah, but I mean, like, it. I'm not, I'm not too, like, I'm not torn about it. Cause I mean, if you're going to lose, if you're going to lose your Oscar for best actor, ask best actor, actor, ass, yeah. best <laughs> ass, America's ass, Steve Rogers. Eat mine, man. I swear to God. If you're going to lose that title Steve Rogers. from someone, but if you're going to lose that title from someone, it and it be Anthony Hopkins, I can't think of any better way to lose it. I'm not going to lie. Anthony Hopkins is a great actor. Yeah. So, but it it just... I smelled you coming, Clarice. <laughs> yeah. That one should have got him an Oscar. Did it? I think he did. Yeah, I think he did. Oh, I, think okay, he did. Cool. I think that was his first. Cool. I believe. I could be wrong, but I think it was. Glad to hear it. But, I mean, like, yeah, it's just... I think that was just a tactic for the Oscars to gain viewerships. Yeah. Because as you can see, like we've, we've seen the numbers go down progressively each year going down. So I'm pretty sure they were trying to like come up with something to gain consistent viewers for the yeah. whole show. Because obviously if you're me, if you're my type, you literally just wait till the end for, mm-hmm. you know, the top three categories. And then you just turn off the TV. Like that's me for the Oscars. I'll, I'll keep track of it on social media. Be like, okay, who won this? Who won that? Blah, 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 blah. But I don't know. It's like, it's not particularly like something I want to watch. It's not something I'll like take the time out of my Sunday night to watch. Oh, I love the Oscars. I actually really enjoy watching the Oscars. I watch it's it every not, year. It's not, the, it's not the best thing for me to watch. Honestly, because I don't know what it is. It's, it's cool. And that's kind of hard, for it, but it's not something I want to watch. And that's, I guess it's kind of surprising for that, a though. movie lover, but it's not something, it's not something I like I, take in consideration. I, I get it though. I, I, yeah. I do get it. Um, that was Milo. Yeah. You was heard that, that Milo? Yeah, it was. The hell? That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a hound. It's a hound. <laughs> I, have a, I have a hound. Yeah. Uh, his bark, his howl is pretty loud. Absolutely. Um, a couple other things I wanted to bring up just that I thought were very cool. Um, obviously, congratulations to Chloe Zhao and everybody who worked on Nomadland. Um, Chloe Zhao won Best Director and her film won Best Picture. So obviously, kudos to you all. Um, the the actor in a supporting role, Daniel Kaluuya for Judas yeah, yeah. and the Black Messiah. If you have not seen Judas and the Black Messiah, you are missing out. It is a fantastic movie. And Daniel Kaluuya he, is a great actor. He is. and He's he, up and coming. He really, he did justice to the character that he was playing. He mm-hmm. really did. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, I, 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 I'm, I'm tempted to not even try. Um, the actress in a supporting role for Minari, uh, Yoo Jung Yoon, I believe that's how you say her name. I apologize if I'm incorrect. Um, big congratulations to you as well. Um, I, I, I love seeing representatives from the Asian community too, after everything they've been through this year. I, yeah, that's awesome. Um, and Parasite won Best Picture, didn't it? Mm-mm. No, my land won Best Picture. Oh, yes, last year. Yeah, yes, so, yes. That was great. Um, I love the fact that Soul won Best Animated Feature and Original Score soul man nice. i've i've showed it to my kids at school julia and i watched it soul is great it is really really good i think it's one of now it's trippy it's kind of like it's kind of wild but it's i th- it's one of my favorite pixar movies i think it's great how was it how was it that julia said she said it was a it was a great rep, great way to w- let kids watch and it taught something i forgot it was it teaches to appreciate what you have okay. because you know the the character that jamie fox plays Joe Gardner he is you know and this really resonated with us because my wife and I are both music teachers um and Joe Gardner is a music teacher in the movie but you know he kind of feels like he's a great jazz musician as well and he feels like his life is inadequate he feels like his life is like he's he's missing out on something he keeps looking for the next best thing and he he not dies but he's kind of in a space between life and death. Um, mm-hmm. 
and there that's a whole other i i'm i'm not even going to try to explain it to you because it really like i had to watch it a few times before i like got it um because it is a little trippy but he he throughout the film and throughout revisiting uh different points of his life and looking at his life from a different perspective he realizes that his life is worth living you know he he learns to find the joy in the small things he learns to find joy in the mundane and the things that he kind of thought were made his life meaningless to find joy in that so there's a really great message in soul as well plus it's about music so i mean like uh yeah so. but i was very happy to see that and then i was happy tenant won visual effects as well because ha- have you seen tenant yet still haven't that would be a fun i that'd be a fun one to watch with you because tenant is Tenet was very good, but you know, even Christopher Nolan said it took him like two years to actually wrap his mind around the screenplay he was writing because Tenet is, I mean, we've talked about this. I think we talked about this in uh, episode 18 or 19 um, of Let's Talk Movies. Chris Nolan movies are a little out there. They're yeah, a little they require, futuristic they really and they, yeah, they're, 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 they're think pieces. I mean, you like, you kind of have to they're very outside the box and tenet was very outside the box um you know you deal with time travel and multiple realities and it's just like it's it's weird it's kind of crazy in the same way that interstellar or um inception or even elements of the dark knight trilogy were uh but i really liked it and it looked incredible it it was one of the best looking movies i've ever seen in my life it was very good so i was very happy to see that um that tenant one visual effects so were there any that stood out to you other than those um one did it was the sound of metal i'm interested to see that movie i saw that but i haven't i haven't really dug deep in what is it about i haven't really checked it out it's basically about a drummer who like loses his hearing mm. and that's that, cool that can be tough and oh, yeah. it's, it's interesting to uh, that would be an interesting movie to see um what else am i looking at here i know i know the sound of metal one editing I'm sweating so much. It's hot in here. Talking about that soul, fam. I know, right? I am a sax player, so I mean... Yeah. Uh, you know, there was only... I think it's been... Now it's been two years since... Um, I've... Since the winner of Best Picture, I have not seen. So it was... Uh, no, it was... Moon, no, it was three years then. It was Moonlight... Mm-hmm um rip yeah it was moonlight <laughs> la la land moonlight la la land moonlight la la land moonlight it was no man land and uh what else what were the other ones i remember there was another one that that one that i haven't seen i saw the green book i saw that i'm not gonna lie i saw that I like the I saw week that before. Too. i think i saw that i saw that the week before the oscars and i was like it's a pretty solid movie and when I saw it one, I was like, okay, cool. But then a lot of people got it got a lot of heat for winning. Do you really? like do you understand like what's your like do you keep track of like the controversies of the Oscars? Like it's hard to keep Not track really. of all I, of it. I, I try to kind of take the Academy Awards at face value. Um I, look, it it's a great honor. It it really is. And I mean, I'm sure it is every actor or actress or director or producer or sound designer or composer or whatever your role may be Mm -hmm. um, or writer, you know, I'm sure it is their, one of their, you know, dreams to win an Oscar or an Academy, you know, the Academy Award for their project or something that they poured so much blood, sweat and tears into. But at the same time, there are so many incredible movies that come that release every single year that aren't even mentioned so i again i try to take it as face value yes it won you know if you have and i don't mean this about nomadland i don't mean this about moonlight or parasite or whatever whatever the case may be yeah i i think i try to take it at face value in that it's not it doesn't mean it's better yeah art is subjective Mm mm-hmm music visual art film whatever it's subjective you know what what you think deserves best picture may not be what i think deserves best picture 
Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, again, just take it as face value. I, you know, it's cool. I I'm, it's awesome. I mean, I, 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 you know, if it inspires me to go watch it, cool. But again, it's not, I don't think it's the end all be all, nor should it be. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's still value in all the other films that didn't win. There's still value in all the other films that weren't even mentioned, you know, for, for this, for this award show. So I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah. I, it's, I don't know. It's just the Oscars is always such a tough thing to like watch because after the fact because like after you watch it and you're like oh wow look at all these great pictures at one and then like the next day it's like well look at all these controversies why is this here and why is that there it's like my man i'm not gonna I lie the oscars as you can see the viewerships are going down i think that's yeah. mainly with the, i think that's mainly why there's so much controversy now because there's so many because the oscars are pretty much doing anything it can i did to get i did see that i think i saved that let me yeah, yeah, yeah. So in in 2014, the Oscars had 43.7 million people tune in. Um, skip two years ahead, 2016, the Oscars had 34.3 million viewers. So we've gone down quite a bit. Um, we've gone down at least 10%. You go another two years, 2019, 29.6 million viewers. We go to this year's that just happened a few days ago. The Oscars only had 9.8 million people tune in. Okay, which is still a lot. Okay, let's be honest. Well, but, yeah, but it's not f- almost 45 million a lot. Yeah, because I don't know what it is. Like, because this year it should have been the most because COVID. I think a lot of people share the what you said earlier about, well, I haven't even seen those. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people feel that way. I think there's a lot of people who go see what's in the movie theater. And again, the Academy is pulling from a much bigger pool of films than we are really privy to. So I think a lot of people are like, well, shoot, I've never seen any of that. I've never seen that movie. I don't know what that movie is. I've never even heard of this person. So they don't really care. And I think, you know, I've seen, uh, even with the, tra- the Chadwick, the Chadwick Bros- Bozeman, I can't even talk even with the Chadwick Boseman thing, I've seen a lot of people who are like, I'm losing my faith in award shows because it's not what should happen in their eyes. I'm not, I'm not saying so, that, but I'm just, I know I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think that's a partial reason that they are seeing a steady decline in, in ratings and in viewership. So I got gotcha. you, but I think, I mean, We'll have to see how the Oscar next year's Oscars. Do you know what I always try to do? I would, I like, I really try to like watch as many movies as I can, just so I can like at least come to an like watch the Oscars and be like, okay, I've seen it or at least I've heard of it. But yeah. it, again, like they they pull from such a wide, broad range of movies, it's hard to keep track of them. They do. They really do. Like it's I a, even it's watch a very broad spectrum. Yeah, I even try to watch some indie indies movies here here and there, and it's like. Clearly, never heard of them in the in the yeah. Oscars. So. There's a lot on Netflix too. There's a lot of like movies from overseas and independent mm-hmm. independent productions and things like that on Netflix. Yeah. Um, so before we get into a little bit of Marvel news, I wanted to briefly bring this up because yesterday, April 26th, was the second anniversary of Avengers Endgame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Let's just Two bask years. in that. Let's just bask. And the fact that two years ago, Avengers Endgame happened. We Let won't. Me, we, we won't. Okay, <laughs> we'll keep this brief because again, we will. We'll, we'll go into like a full hour talking about Marvel, obviously. But it's, I don't know. That's wild to think. You it know, obviously, obviously, it was ten years in the making, pretty much. Was. No one was expecting it to happen. Like, th- like what made that movie so special is because we really didn't know what we, we were getting ourselves into. Like we were slowly like indoctrinated into this whole universe building and theory collecting kind of uh, category of movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So like this was just so new <laughs> and it worked so well. Yeah. That it's such a cultural impact on literally the movie industries in itself, as you could see. For sure. You know, it, it's funny because like, 
as I, you know, as I think about it and like the experience of it, you know, I remember um, when you guys all had the house together, you mm-hmm. know, Miguel and a whole bunch of our buddies that they had a, they had a house together and we, uh, you know, I remember going over to the house and being like, fucking Avengers Endgame. Like just, we, we, we had like a group chat about it. It was like a bit, it was an exciting thing going on in our lives. I felt mm-hmm. like. Yeah. You know, it was a big deal. It wasn't, it wasn't just a movie. It was like, it was something that was, I mean, we talked about it every day, multiple times a day. And I, I mean, I remember the, the we- months and weeks and days leading up to it. I mean, like I would check my phone at least 10 times a day to see if they dropped a new trailer. Like, yeah. I mean, I remember where I was when the infinity war trailer dropped i remember where i was when the end game trailer dropped and when we got the thanksgiving tv spot um that was the whatever it takes one i think um and then i remember where i was when the set when that final trailer dropped um for end game i was like like i i think i called you or i called i called somebody and i, I called one of you guys and I was like, did you see the trailer? Like just freaking out. And um, I don't know. It, it was just, it was a big point in our lives. And it's kind of mm-hmm. funny because I remember <laughs> I, I got stabbed in the back twice by this and I'm, I'm calling them both out right here, right now on the show. But, you know, I've obviously at the time, my, my wife and I weren't married, um, but she texted me and she was like, okay, are you going to be mad at me? And I was like, this was the night it came out. So this was April 2nd. She was like, are you going to be mad at me? And I was like, about what? We lived farther apart then. And she was like, I think we're going to go see Endgame. (laughs) And I was like, no. I was like, no, wait for me. Like, we're all going to go together. Like, wait. And she was like, I I don't know. I think think we're going to go. And I was like, okay, fine. Sounds like such a break. Go. I was pissed. I was like, whatever. And then, you know, I obviously I was I was living with my brother still and my parents and uh, my brother started getting all his shit together. He started getting his keys and his be- his jacket. And I, I was like, where the hell are you going? He was like, um, I love I, how they don't want to break. I know they, 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 they didn't want to say it because they knew I was going to be like. But I don't he was, remember he, why he was like, it's like the like when you kick dirt, when you're like, oh, I. I don't know. <laughs> he was like, I don't remember we're... why we watched it the next day, though. Well, because we wanted to go, and he was Jeff was like, "We're gonna go see Endgame." I was like, you <sighs> "I was like, oh, I'm so pissed." Yeah, but I remember we went, we hopped on because I call, I think I called you like right then and there, and I was like, "We're buying tickets like right now, like we're going to find tickets," and they were sold out. Remember, like okay, we couldn't yeah. even go. And then we went, I remember we went, I came over to the house. It was like, it was probably like five thirty, six o'clock. Mm-hmm. And you, me and Anthony and Moo, we were like, all right, let's do it. Let's go. And we hopped in the car and we drove over to Cinemark in Richmond. And there was a line. Do you remember the line going out the door? I do. It was like every single door. And there's like eight or nine doors on that mm-hmm. Cinemark, uh, like the, the front facing where the street is. And the yeah. lines were like in the street. And we were like, shit. And I, was it you and Anthony or somebody? You like cut everybody and got somehow got to the front of the line. And they were like, come back later because the later one has more seats. So we went back to the house. I think we ate, we got dinner or something. And then we went back and we ended up seeing, do you remember what time did we even see it? It was like, I think, 10. hold on. It was like well, I have I have the ticket. That's how much I have the ticket. That little yeah. white dot on the poster. I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check it. I still have my ticket, but obviously it's like in a box somewhere. I don't have it like framed up on the poster. So we saw it at nine fifty five. Nine fifty five. We okay. saw it at nine fifty five, which means I mean I remember we didn't leave until like almost midnight. <laughs> like it was it was after midnight by the time we got out of there. But yeah. uh, it was it, the whole thing leading up to it, talking about it. It was, pr- it was, it's not even probably, it was, it was the best movie going experience I've ever had. Same. Hands down. It was probably, it was probably one of the best. What, what, did we see that on a Friday? Mm. We had to. 
Maybe it probably came out on a Friday. Yeah, yeah to it get was that probably, weekend box office. Yeah, without a doubt, it was definitely one of the yeah one of my most memorable days of my life because going to that movie theater, sitting down, and knowing that it's all going to come to an end in a spectacular fashion. Yep. Because obviously, when Infinity War came out, we knew they were going to come back at some right, point. Right, right. We if you were as in depth with all with as a, as we were, you knew they were going to come back, but you didn't know like to what extent. And right, you didn't you didn't get point. how. Yeah, so that was just so interesting. It like it was just such a experiment. I'm gonna put this right. It was such a joyful moment. I'm pretty it sure was. for everybody. Each of us were literally like, our theater didn't have that. Um, I guess our theater was pretty respectful because you know you you've seen videos of like audience reactions of yeah of I mean America lifting we, yeah we I mean every moments. everybody cheered I mean it like yeah. I I mean when he said Avengers Assemble I think I was like yeah like I screamed but it wasn't as crazy as some of them I mean like yeah which there are way, some movie I theaters would, that I would be, erupted I would, I would swing on them I'm sorry to, I'm sorry guys but I did not just spend fucking fifteen dollars and twenty dollars in popcorn and, and a soda to not hear the movie to i not even hear be, him say it yeah i would be fucking livid and every time i see those reactions it's just like i i would be pissed i would literally ask the, the ticket guy like you're gonna give me another ticket because i couldn't hear like 80 percent of the movie you're the one guy who when cap is like when he grabs the when he grabs mjolnir and like all the avengers start to charge Everybody else is like, yeah, yeah, screaming. And you're the one guy, you're like, what did he say? Yeah. I didn't, I, what did, I didn't hear him. What did he say? You always yeah. scream too loud. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like when you go to the movies, you want to see the movie. Woo. And I get, I get that experience of yeah. this absolute excitement, which again, I was too. Don't get me wrong. I did cheer, but you know what happened? That cheer lasted for like three seconds. And then I was like, okay, movie's still going. We're going to watch. Yep. So that was just me. Well, Again, it's though. funny because everybody like everybody was cheering until like Thanos's army and the Avengers all met, and then everybody went to like, yeah, because they were just at all with the fucking just like drooling. Mm -hmm. But it it was one of the best movie experiences of my entire life. Um, so let's talk a little bit what's coming after. So we have a little uh, it, kind of maybe sort of a Thor Love and Thunder update. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and issue a possible spoiler warning. If you do not want Thor Love and Thunder possibly spoiled for you, maybe click off. So this story comes from Screen Geek. I saw this today, actually, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, and I did a little bit of digging. So if you remember in Thor Ragnarok, um, Chris Hemsworth... Uh, played um or no liam hemsworth his brother played thor matt damon was loki um sam neill was odin in loki's little stage production where he mm -hmm. made himself look so great um i forgot what he called it loki's loki's farewell or elegy or so, something yeah. like something along those lines um and it was cool that they gave them a little bit of a cameo where they could play them because it's always a running joke that Chris Hemsworth stole the role from his brother Liam. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I don't, honestly, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's kind of funny if it is. Um, but there was a rumor on the 4chan Reddit page, which 4chan has posted, they post leaks a lot and they post rumors. Um, there was just a big one about Spider Man Far or um, No Way Home that we didn't even talk about just because I, I'm, I'm leery about spoiler things and putting stuff out there that we don't know if it's true, but I thought this was kind of interesting um, because it would, it could potentially change a lot of the MCU. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is rumored um, that Gore, the God butcher, who is obviously the main villain of Thor love and thunder played by Christian Bale, which is going to be dope. I'm psyched for Christian Bale to be a part of the MCU. There is a rumor that he will kill all of those Asgardian actors from Loki's play. So Matt Damon, Liam Hemsworth, Melissa McCarthy, Sam Neill. Um, there's a rumor that he will also kill the Grandmaster, which is Jeff Goldblum's character. 
he will kill Korg, and Aww. he will kill Lady Sif. Or Sif. Lady Sif. Sif. Lady Sif, yeah. Aw. What do you sad. think about that? What, Korg? Yeah. Yeah. I like Korg. Um, but the, hey, that, that's Korg. basically the rumor that he is going to kick some ass in this movie. And I'm sorry, but with a name like Gore the God Butcher, he's got, he's got to kill somebody. <laughs> like, that's, that's a boss name. That's yeah. cool. Well, I mean... Let's be honest. When Thor Ragnarok came out, fucking hell, uh, Hella, like, Hella was awesome, some, man. Hella laid down some bodies. She, she did. She some bodies. definitely did. So, um, but I, I find it interesting that potentially, and again, take that with a grain of salt. That could be true. That could not be true. Um, I'm picky about spoilers. I'm, I, I could kind of go either way. Sometimes some things I don't want to know anything. Some things mm-hmm. I don't really mind to know a couple of things um but here's the interesting part at least the most interesting part for me it also rumored a potential fight scene that involves gore almost killing nebula and mantis i presume um injuring them pretty heftily Mm -hmm. um and also Drax is protecting Nebula and Mantis while Thor and the remaining guardians are fighting Gore. Drax might die. Eh, maybe. Because, you know, he's obviously going to be in the DCEU. What? You don't know that? Drax? Dave Batista? Oh, you mean Dave Batista. I Yeah. I thought you meant Drax. You thought Drax was gonna, no. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm going to stop like, the show. Like, I need sleep because I don't yeah. know if I realize what you just said. No. Who's he playing actor, in the DCEU? Supposedly, he's in talks for being playing as Bane. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You don't know that? I'm dropping some movie news for you. I didn't, I didn't know that. I, di- yeah. I didn't know that. There's a movie he's news show. To. I didn't know yeah. that. Hmm. He's supposed to. He's in talks for playing Bane. Interesting. Or someone interesting. 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 So I think. Hmm. Uh, to be completely honest, if they're gonna kill one, I think Drax is probably the one that I'm most okay. Mantis. I his story. His story's kind over. Of, you know what I mean? His yes. story's over. Thanos I could kind on. of take Mantis or leave her. I mean, she's fine. I don't have a problem with her. But at the same time, I'm. She's not a major enough character. I think if they killed Drax, you know, you because again, just like with Thanos, it's going to be with with, again. with Thanos be no. He, he with can come the, back. Like with Thanos beating the Hulk right away, or with Thanos winning at the end of Infinity War, you know, it it would kind of take away from characters like Hela or Thanos or or Gore the God Butcher if they didn't lay down some bodies like you just said. Mm-hmm. So I think killing Drax would make people kind of jump back in their seats a little bit like, holy crap, they just killed Drax. Um, and I think that would kind of give them that little bit of push like, wow, like that's really cool. Like that's kind of wild. So I'm just curious to see how he's introduced because you know what's always interesting yeah, me too. is that I don't know these these characters that you see like in these MCU projects like you you can you can tell like in the trailer you can see where they come from mm-hmm. and how they became the villain but for sure. it seems like seems like he's gonna come out of nowhere you know well I mean? yeah and I I'm sure there's a backstory Jim that we can I'm, reference. I'm sure we'll get a backstory at some point mm-hmm. it'll it'll explain excuse me Yana. Um, so I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Two more little things to get through real quick before we head, get out of here. Um, we have a little bit of a Halloween Kills update. Uh, again, I'm going to issue a spoiler warning. If you do not want Halloween Kills spoiled for you, this has been out there for a while. This is kind of common knowledge at this point. Um, I'm going to tiptoe around it a little bit for you, Miguel, because I know you haven't quite seen Halloween 2018. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, I, I'm okay with surface level spoilers, what I call surface level spoilers, like, you know, well, I'm, do you mind if I spoil some of this for you? Go for it. So obviously I'm not going to spoil the end of Halloween 2018, but, you know, Michael survives and there, it has been 
semi-confirmed for a long time that there will be a flashback to the original film in Halloween Kills. A flashback to the original movie. The night that Michael was apprehended and shot by Loomis and the night he did all of that. And the original in 1978. Um and again, I'm okay with surface level spoilers. Like knowing Dr. Loomis is going to make an appearance, whether they get a new actor or they show him from angles where you don't really see his face, that doesn't really bother me knowing that. Knowing that there's going to be a flashback doesn't really bother me. Knowing that the mask is going to be burned doesn't really bother me. Um, I think this is a pretty surface level spoiler. Um, there was a Halloween set photo posted by a producer named Ryan Freeman. Um, and I'll, I'll leave this picture up here my god and i forgot to send this to you i'm sorry i'm hurt uh let me let me let me find it real quick so this set photo reveals the classic car um the car that michael stole let me go here the car that michael stole originally from smith's grove when he escaped um on you know, right before Halloween in 1978. Mm -hmm. So a couple of interesting things. Let me, let me take this, add to photos. Let me send this to you. I'm going to shoot you a text real quick. Uh, there we go. Now this is a picture. Michael is in it. I don't know why somebody Photoshopped him in it, but <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a strange picture. But as you see, there is the original station wagon, that brownish, gray station wagon it's got the illinois official thing on the side mm -hmm. um that is the car that is the exact replica of the car that michael stole from smith's grove when he escaped in 1978 now why is this really an update you know there's been speculation and different rumors as to how much of the movie is a flashback and from what i have heard and from what's been rumored this flashback is a pretty significant part of the movie. Like, you think it's going to be a good portion of the movie? I don't know if it's going to be half. I could see it being like a quarter of the movie by the time it's said and done. Give or take. Give or take. Um, yeah. And, that, you know, it's dangerous to go back and play in that 1978 world. I mean, it just is. It's dangerous because you, I mean, you have Donald Pleasance, which is that's hard yeah I mean, there, there is no other loomis man i mean malcolm mcdowell did a great job but i don't know if you could just recast dr loomis to put him in this flashback um unless they cgi his face i i don't know they could they could cgi his face who knows mm -hmm. um but i just find it interesting that this car is going to be in a flashback because why would it show the car like why would the car even need to be in the shot unless it was something kind of important. Um, if you look behind it, there's an older ambulance. Like you can kind of make out a, the, a, a, you know, a, an ambulance from that era. Um, so I, I think this, if, you know, th while this seems like a small piece of news, if anything, this picture reveals that the flashback will be significant and it will show some pretty significant um, things in it. Um, and it hints at a much larger um, purpose. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, and I think, you know, I, while I know a lot of people are nervous about the flashback in H Kills, I think David Gordon Green and John Carpenter aren't going to screw it up. But of course, then again, David Gordon Green, you know, if at the end of, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it again, but at the end of 2018, the, there's a, Lori and Michael are fighting in this upstairs bedroom of her house and it's an exact replica of the bedroom from the end of the original from what i understand they were going to go back and reshoot the end of the original for 2018 and change what happened at one point now that didn't happen i think they approached john carpenter about changing his movie and he was like no eat my ass like basically you know that like like what you would say yeah um so yeah i don't i don't know but i i just i uh I think they'll do it justice. I think from what we've heard from the test screenings, from what we've heard um, from people who have read the script, I think it's going to be great. 
again, I haven't read the script. I don't know exactly what happens. I don't want to know exactly what happens. I'm not too picky about spoilers, but I'm picky about this one. Yeah. Like I said, I'm okay with surface level things, but I know there are scripts out there. I've seen them. I've seen them on YouTube channels. I've seen people holding them up, but I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good speculating. So if y'all want to speculate about Halloween Kills, our show is a, a good place to speculate and not get ruined. Yeah, so, I gotcha. Um, last little thing I want to get to, and you have not seen this yet. Let me pull this up here let's see so a little bit of interesting news out of the monster verse to wrap us up here so obviously there is there are no confirmed films past godzilla versus kong godzilla versus kong kind of felt like it could possibly be a climax would you agree with that yes um so which there's go on which isn't necessarily the case because every single Godzilla movie since the show up period, it's pretty much its own movie. Like if you separate it from everything else, obviously there's callbacks, but it doesn't lead up to anything. So whenever I saw Godzilla versus Kong and I saw how it ended, it's like, okay, yeah, it ended, but I'm almost certain there'll be another one coming soon because mm -hmm. I mean, he's just such a big franchise. Right. There's no need to build a universe there's no need to lead anything into another movie because yeah. it's, it can be built no matter what, like each yeah. movie is good with on its own by itself. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you go back and watch, what was that episode 16? Yes, it was 16 where we did our Godzilla versus Kong spoiler review. Um, one of our main questions moving forward is if you do, if they do continue the monster verse, which I think you and I are on the same page, they definitely should. I think mm -hmm. we both would love to see more monster verse. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? What characters do you bring in? Because obviously, you know this better than I even know this. There is a large pool of villains of Godzilla villains that you could bring into the mix. Like there are yep. a lot of different directions you could go, but I think it's kind of interesting the direction that it may be going. It is a very interesting child. Okay. So there was a report from the Hollywood Reporter. This came out today, April 27th, that Legendary is currently in talks with Adam Wingard, who directed Godzilla vs. Kong, to continue the MonsterVerse with one or more new projects that are in early talks and development to explore hollow earth and to explore the rest of the mythology surrounding the monster verse the main title that is getting tossed around drum roll please is son of kong <laughs> miguel has left the chat my friends miguel is out he has given up He's leaving. I think he just quit the show. I think Miguel just quit. What? Did you just, did you just quit the show on me? About to, if that's what they're going to fucking do. Fuck out of here. Yeah. I, what? I, I don't know. If you're unfamiliar, Son of Kong um, is, it, 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 I think it was released. Look, I'm not, I'm it not was down not, Son of Kong did not come out very long after the original, but the original was so popular, they felt like they had to follow it up with a sequel, and Son of Kong was that sequel. So basically, they go back to Skull Island, and after Kong has died, they find Skull Island is ravaged by something, and they find another gorilla that they believe is Kong's son. While that's cool... Makes no sense. I don't. I, I, I don't see I how don't, it can make sense. I don't sense. know. I, I don't think. I just I don't think that that would, uh, like you said, I don't I don't think it would make sense. I think it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Out of all the directions that they could take the monster verse. I mean, just mm -hmm. like we talked about, out of all the villains, out of all the monsters, out of all the directions you could go, I don't know if Son of Kong is the is the right direction. <laughs> Bro, Son of Kong sucked. 
Son of Godzilla sucked. Oh yeah, they yeah. did do a Son of Godzilla. They did didn't too. They? they really oh, did. Man. Guess what? It sucked. So I can't imagine you making a Son of Kong legendaries. I'm not gonna lie. That may be the end of of the MonsterVerse if they even try it. Why? How are you gonna? Exp- how are you? How again, are you gonna explore Hollow Earth and the mythology of the MonsterVerse with Son of Kong? What the hell are they gonna have? Is he gonna yeah, be are they down gonna, there? Is it gonna? Is it literally gonna be like Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong? Also, I, that's how as, I imagine it. As Brandon Davis, is there gonna put, be? Is there gonna be peanut cannons that they can shoot around in Hollow Earth? Is that what's gonna happen? As Brandon is, Davis, is Kong gonna start wearing a red tie? <laughs> well, what's next? Is there gonna be a crocodile king roaming around in there? Is 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 Godzilla gonna be the crocodile king? And Kong and Son of Godzilla are gonna be mm. Kong, Kong and Diddy Kong. Is that is that is that where I'm getting at? Is that You're what I'm, very are we just about are we just making a Nintendo game? Pretty much. Are we just making a live action Nintendo game? That's Godzilla versus Donkey right Kong. Yeah, pretty much. And Diddy Kong. Next. Don't forget Diddy Kong. Oh my God. I, I don't know. know. I, I don't like it. As as Brandon Davis I was said on Twitter, something a little bit more. Yeah, as Brandon as Brandon Davis said on Twitter, apparently Kong hasn't just been smashing buildings. What the fuck has he been smashing? Nothing. They spent the entire movie talking about how how he's alone. He and he's no the family. last. He's the last of his species. Yeah, yeah. I feel like. Again, that's just rumor. That that could be completely false. I mean, Adam Wingard and people from Legendary are probably like, y'all are idiots. Um, mm-hmm. But if that was true, it would be kind of strange where you've built at least two movies or more on the fact that he is the last of his kind and Godzilla is the last of his kind. So if you're like, oh, well, Kong found another gorilla and they made it and they had a kid at some point and here's his long lost son. This ain't the. This is gonna be like MonsterVerse meets the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Like this is not gonna be, like that. The, I, I'm I'm not about it. As much as I'm a King Kong fan, um, and to be completely honest, Son of Kong is fine. Like I mean, it's it's spoofy in Sucked. nature, but it's not like atrocious. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I don't know. I I do not think that that is the direction that uh, they should be taking the MonsterVerse. <laughs> But that's me personally. It should. I don't, know. I don't think so either. Again, but I'm not a I'm not a Kong fan, as you can see. I feel I feel like that meme where it's like, well, what's her name says Kong bows to no one, and it's Godzilla sitting in the chair, and he's like, and I took that person, and I took that person, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's how I feel when I saw this news. I I was actually driving. That's when I called you in the car earlier because oh, I saw okay, it. that I popped gotcha. up on my phone, and I was like. Like I did a double take and I was like, there's no way. I was like, that's not true. And I called you and then I was like, no, I'll just save it for, I'll, I'll get your reaction on, on camera tonight. <laughs> well, you got it. And it was yeah. trash. Very interesting. Oh my God, man. I don't what? know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. No Mecha Ghidorah or Destroya or anybody else today. No, literally We're going straight to anything. Son of Kong. <laughs> literally anything. <laughs> Son of Kong is the one to beat Godzilla. Get the fuck out of here. Kong himself couldn't do it. Ghidorah couldn't do it. The All the other Mutos couldn't do it. Nope. Son of Kong. Boy, Kong literally got burnt in his back. I can't wait to see Son of Kong because I hope that God they show that scar on his back from him getting beamed. They're going to go to fight and it's going to build up this big fight and Godzilla's going to get there and he's going to be like. So there's two of you. He's going to look down. At least Kong. Kong looked him right in the eyes. They were at the same level. Son mm-hmm. of Kong, he's going to be like, what you want? Yeah. <laughs> You're in the wrong that's, neighborhood. That's weird, man. You belong down there. Lie. <laughs> I don't want to lie. I don't I'm know. I think it's very this. strange, too. Yeah. But, guys, that is going to do it for uh, for episode three of uh, Let's Talk Movie News. So, let us know. We had a whole lot to talk about this week. Let us know what you thought of Tony Moran's apology to Halloween fans. Let us know what you think of the possibility of CGI monsters in Resident Evil. What was your take on the Oscars? Do you think Chadwick Boseman was snubbed of his award? What do you think of these new plot leaks for Halloween Kills and for Thor Love and Thunder? And... 
Should the MonsterVerse continue with Son of Kong? I see Miguel shaking his head. Probably not. I think that would be (laughs) a mistake. But please join us next week on Monday evening at 8 p.m. for episode number 20 of Let's Talk Movies. I can't believe we're at episode 20. Can you? We are episode 20. I was thinking about that today. 20 weeks in a row, man. This is kind of wild. This is our 20th podcast episode. We've got plenty of other episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's not even just to mention this show. So, um, this show. So, uh, be sure to like us on Twitter and Instagram at We Talk the Movies. We post a whole bunch of new content on Twitter and Instagram, plus some behind the scenes footage as well. Thank you so much for listening and taking the time out of your week to spend it with us. Please leave us a like and a comment. Let us know what you think. We want to build this community and we want to hear from you. So, we'll talk to y'all soon. Have a great week. Peace.